Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to It's Time to Reroll Melee Edition. If you're new to the game, or simply looking to reroll, or even wanting to try something new, then this is the video for you. So, some common questions we get asked are, what's the best melee? What melee should I play? Is this melee better than this one? Well, in this video, we're going to be addressing that by covering the top three melee right now, all of which are extremely strong in their own ways. We go through the strengths and weaknesses of each, give you a few comp suggestions and all the talents, gear and stat priorities you need to get straight into Arena. So if you've seen our caster edition, you'll know exactly how this works. What we're going to do is first cover the strengths and weaknesses of our top three melee right now, which are currently Death Knights, Windwalker Monks and Havoc Demon Hunters. To start off with, let's begin with the Unholy Death Knight. Unholy is currently the strongest melee hands down. Insanely tanky, lots of disruption, good south heals, great slows, Death Knight currently has it all. But first, let's look at the strengths. Number one, insane south heals. We've all been in that situation where you CC an unholy Death Knight's healer and somehow he's just not dying. Well, this is due to their incredible self healing. Death Strike, when combined with Transfusion, is ridiculous and means if the Death Knight can hit you, he's probably not going to die. Lots of Disruption. Pet Kick, Mind Freeze, Grip, Asphyxiate, Pet Stun. Yeah, if a Death Knight doesn't want you to cast, you won't. They have some of, if not the highest disruption in the game. If you like annoying casters, then Death Knights are the melee for you. Number three, good consistent damage. Death Knights have some of the highest consistent damage in the game. And not only that, but while doing this damage, they are also applying healing reductions at the same time in the form of necrotic strikes so are insane at killing healers. Number four, lots of defensives. Death Knights have also notoriously been quite squishy. However, that's all changed. Death Knights are almost impossible to kill, not only because of their self healing, but also because of their vast amount of defensive cooldowns. Now to the weaknesses. Number one, mobility. Death Knights main weakness has been the same for some time now and it's just their mobility. Death Knights can sometimes struggle for uptime if they're not getting any assistance from their partner. Number two, not much burst. Death Knights don't have that much burst really, but what they do lack in burst, they make up for inconsistent damage. However, if you like big numbers and seeing your enemy's health get chunked down, then Death Knight might not be the class for you. Number three, not much utility. Death Knights don't really bring that much team utility outside of anti-magic zone. And if you don't spec into that, then you literally have none. Just something to note if you enjoy playing more of a support based role. In our number two spot, we've got Windwalker Monks. Windwalkers are extremely strong right now and not just because of their insane burst with Fist of Fury, but also due to the utility that they can bring for their team. They're a great class at enabling their teammates to shine while also bringing a Mortal Strike debuff good damage and great mobility. Let's take a look at their strengths. Number one, Crazy Burst. Windwalkers burst hard and burst often, having Touch of Death being able to really dent an enemy's health bar on a longer cooldown, while still having the short cooldown burst with Fist of Fury and your Storm, Earth and Fire clones. When you think mobility, Windwalkers are probably the first class you think of. They have a freedom, two gap closes in the form of rolls, can set up a portal to teleport back, and if that wasn't enough, can also travel the distance of the entire map with their flying jade serpent kick. Number three, good utility. When you think monks, you might not think utility, but when compared to the other melee, the utility that they provide is actually incredibly good. You bring ring of peace, freedom, disarm, roots, and even some decent off hills. Now let's take a look at their weaknesses. Number one, vulnerable in stuns. When stunned, Windwalkers have zero defensives. You can't Karma or Wall while stunned, so you always need to be using things preemptively as the risk of dying inside of a stun is extremely high. Number two, lack of stuns. Since Fist of Fury no longer stuns, Windwalkers now only have Leg Sweep to stun your enemies with, which is on a one minute baseline cooldown. If not paired with a teammate who brings a lot of stuns, you can often lack the lockdown to secure kills. Number three, lack of crowd control. 
With Paralyze being on a 45 second cooldown and Leg Sweep being on a baseline 1 minute, Windwalkers really lack any strong form of crowd control, so are often best suited with a class that nullifies this. Things like Warlock or even Mages. Last up, we've got Demon Hunters. These are new in Legion and are probably the most overtuned melee to date, having pretty much everything in their kit. If you like flying around and enjoy jumping, then Demon Hunter is the class for you. Let's take a look at their strengths and weaknesses. Number 1. Mobility Do I really need to say anything here? Demon Hunters have ridiculous mobility. And not only that, their mobility also does damage. Probably the class in the game with the most in terms of mobility. Number 2. Mana Rift Mana burn, mana burn, mana burn, mana burn, we've all faced them. Demon Hunters are incredibly overpowered with this ability. Number 3. Lots of strong defensives. Blur, Darkness, Neverwalk. Demon Hunters have some crazy strong defensive cooldowns, and when talented for it, you almost have two immunities and then even a discount invasion on top of that. Number 4. Strong damage in Metamorphosis. Once you see a Demon Hunter go into Metamorphosis, it's time to be scared. In this form, their burst damage is incredibly high. However, even outside of it, their consistent damage is still good. Number 5. Self Healing. Demon Hunter has some of the highest passive self healing in the game. Being able to almost outheal all dots alone, this class is incredibly strong when paired up against dot based casters. Now to the weaknesses. Number 1. Lack of slows. Demon Hunters lack slows. To even have access to one, they have to spec into it, resulting in people being able to build distance from you very fast, or even kite you around a pillar. Number 2. Relying on winning on mana. Demon Hunter's main win condition nowadays is usually mana. This means games are often long and rely you on surviving until the enemy healer eventually goes out of mana. Number 3. No pills. Outside of darkness, Demon Hunters don't really bring anything utility wise, or even any pills. If your teammates are in trouble and you don't have darkness, there isn't really much you can do in terms of helping. Number 4. Vulnerable to stuns. Demon Hunters rely a lot on kiting, and also their defensives, apart from auto blur, cannot be used whilst inside of a stun. This means getting caught without a trinket can often mean the end for you. Okay, so hopefully the strengths and weaknesses of our top 3 melee give you a little help and insight into deciding which one is best suited for you. So, let's now get started for each of the specs going through talents, Azerite traits and gear and then give you a few comp suggestions so you're ready to get straight into the arena. First, let's start with your normal talents. On the first row, you should be, for the most part, taking Infected Claws. The only exception to this is when you're paired up against teams where you think your pet is going to be consistently dying. Then, you can consider taking All Will Serve. On the second row, Ebb and Fever should just always be taken, as it's a huge boost to your overall passive damage. For the third row, again, there is not much choice, with Asphyxiate being better for PvP in almost all scenarios. On the level 60 row, Soul Reaper is again the best talent, and is a nice little boost to damage that will also generate some runes. For the level 75, there is some choice however. Death Pact should be your default, as it's good in almost all scenarios. However, Spal Eater can be used against double caster comp in Freeze, or against casters in general, and Wraith Walk can be taken when you know for sure that you will not be the target, and can benefit from the extra mobility at the cost of a defensive. Again, for the level 90 talents, Pestilence is your only choice. All of the talents on this tier are not amazing for Arena, however, Pestilence is the best of the worst providing you with some extra fester in wound stacks if they stand in your death and decay. And last up, we have of course Unholy Frenzy. This is an insane cooldown and really allows you to stack up those necrotic strikes. Moving on to PvP talents, there is one you should never change, and that's Necrotic Strike. This is your main rune spender and way to create pressure, adding that big heal and absorb debuff to your target. To accompany Necrotic Strike, you have a few options, but your default should be Raise Abomination. This is a nice offensive cooldown that applies your Virulent Plague and also stacks up for Festering Wounds on the target it's hitting. 
while still doing some very good damage, just another tool to quickly stack up those necrotic strikes. Lastly is Transfusion. What this does is it gives you some runic power whilst also reducing the cost of your death strike by half, meaning you can spam those death strikes and do that ridiculous healing you're known for. However, you also have some variety. If you need more utility and defensives for either you or your team, you can trade it at the cost of some damage from Abomination, trading it for Anti-Magic Zone. Also, when up against casters and you don't think you'll ever be in range to make full use of Transfusion, Dark Simulacrum is a good option to steal some very important spells or defensive cooldowns. And last up, if you need even more damage, Necrotic Aura just flat out boosts your passive damage, giving you a little higher kill potential. Moving on to Azerite traits, you should be aiming for 3 Howl Chains. This is hands down the current best trait, and gives you some nice added damage every time you empower your pet. To go with this, it's best to get 1 Cankerous Wounds for the chance of adding extra Festering Wounds, and then 1 Magus of the Dead, both are just some nice little 1.1 wonder traits that do great in boosting your damage. For the third, it doesn't really matter, however the best bet is Battlefield Focus, as you and your pets and even your teammates are able to quickly go through the stacks, giving you some nice added damage. Moving on, we've got Gear and Stat Priority. Your current, you currently want to be aiming for two things, and that's Haste and Versatility. These are your current best two stats, with Mastery close behind and Crit not being the best. So, just aim for maximum haste, then either Versa and Mastery as an off stat, and you'll be good. Now that you have all the information to get your Death Knight Arena ready, let's get into some compositions you should be aiming to play. These are currently the best compositions, and are all, for the most part, Tier 1. Death Knight, Windwalker, Mistweaver. Known as the Walking Dead, this composition does some insane consistent pressure, with Monks bringing Mortal Strike debuff, great uptime thanks to Monks' mobility, and lots of small instant interrupts and crowd control to really set healers behind. Combine things like Death Grip onto a healer into a triple leg sweep to create some extra AoE pressure. Death Knight Demon Hunter Restoration Druid. This composition is extremely tanky. You have two classes with extreme self heals in Death Knight and Demon Hunter, and with a healer that can fend well for itself. Being able to kite and sit bare form when required, this composition looks to pump out single target damage whilst mana rifting the healer on cooldown to create pressure. Death Knight Warrior Mistweaver. Known as TSG, this is again a melee cleave, but this time a bit more balls to the wall. TSG loves to set his scope on one target and then train them into the ground. Putting all of their instant CC onto the healer, this composition has some of the highest single target damage output in the game. However, can really struggle with being kited. Next up, we've got the Windwalker Monk. Same as before, let's start with talents. First up is Eye of the Tiger. This is just a great default talent as it's a passive increase to both your damage and healing. Chi Burst can be considered in some rare occasions when you need to be scoring a kill in short burst windows. Next up, we have Tiger's Lust. This is not only great for yourself, but also for helping your teammates break roots and connect to enemies. On our next row, we've got one choice, and that's Ascension. This is just the best passive damage increase on this tier, giving you a boost to your Chi as well as energy regeneration. Next, you've got three choices, either Tiger Tail Sweep, Ring of Peace, or Good Karma. Ring of Peace is an excellent default pick that can be used offensively to negate targets' casts or mobility, in some cases also defensive cooldowns like Urban Wall or Priest's Barrier, and can also help enable your caster or simply peel for your team, whereas Tiger Tail Sweep can be great offensively as it provides you with a shorter cooldown stun. Good Karma can also be considered in some matchups where you're being trained and struggle with enemies going straight through your Karma, a rare scenario but something that's always worth taking into consideration. On our level 75 tier, with the new trinket Gladiator's Maledict, we have only one option, and that's Diffuse Magic. Not only is this good versus casters, but it completely counters this new trinket. Next up is the level 90 talent tier. Here we have two choices, either Hit Combo, which is great in the majority of situations, just for some nice passive increase on our damage. Rushing Jade Wind can, however, be considered when you're focusing more on doing cleave damage. 
For our last talent, there is only one option, and that's Whirling Dragon Punch. This just helps you burst more consistently and also does some very good damage. Up next are the PvP talent choices. For default, there is one talent you will never want to be changing, and that's Turbo Fists. This gives you some extra AoE, adds a defensive to Fist, as well as enabling it to also slow all enemies by 90%. Just great in all situations. To pair with Turbo Fists, there is Reverse Harm, another talent that should always be taken. It's a good heal that will also generate you 2 Chi, while still doing some good damage on top of it. For your last spot, you have a few options. Fortifying Brew is great when targets train you, as it's an extra defensive they need to go through. However, Grapple Weapon can be a good defensive for both you and your team when up against melee. And finally, Alpha Tiger can provide you with a little extra damage if you feel you don't need any extra defensives or any utility. Moving on to Azerite, monks want to be stacking one trait, as it's just so far ahead of the others, and that is Open Palm Strike. This boosts your fist damage by a huge margin, and also gives you a chance at some extra chi, as a lot of your damage is coming from fists, and it synergizes well with turbo fists. Look to get three of these, and then what you go for next is ideally the 1.1 wonder traits. You want one Fury of Zwen for the taste and the chance to summon the pet, one Glory of the Dawn for that extra Rising Sun Kick chance, and then one Dance of Chi Ji, or one Sunrise Technique. Dance of Chi Ji is good for some more cleave, and Sunrise Technique is some nice single target damage. In terms of gear, Monk's stat priority looks like this. Versa, then Mastery, with Crit and Haste both being equal. So just aim to get the maximum versatility and Mastery as you can, with the majority of your pieces having both on if possible. Now we know all we need to know about gear, talents and Azerite traits, let's cover some compositions. First up is Windwalker Death Knight Mistweaver, probably the strongest composition in the game right now. This cleave focuses on doing high consistent damage whilst being near unkillable. With Death Knight's self healing and Monk's mobility, there is just no good target. Combine that with some insane consistent pressure and you have yourself a tier 1 comp. Look to combine instant crowd control into the enemy healer whilst bursting a target, and victory should be yours in no time. Windwalker Frost Mage Restoration Druid. This composition is a counter to all things melee. Add consistent damage of the monk with the mage's chitin and slows, and you've got yourself an extremely strong composition. Look to focus on chitin until you can set up kills inside of a leg sweep. Also, don't underestimate the utility you bring for the mage. Assist him with kiting using Tiger's Lust and Ring of Peace. Windwalker, Destruction, Mistweaver or Restoration Shaman. This composition has it all. Insane longevity, great crowd control, really good burst damage and even good consistent damage from the Windwalker. As the Windwalker in this composition, you can also do a great job as setting your Destruction Warlock up for Chaos Bolts by either using Leg Sweep or Ring of Peace enabling him to cast. Last up is of course the newest class added to the game in Legion, the Demon Hunter. This highly mobile agility user practically has it all, so let's get started into talents, gearing and composition. Same as before, let's start with the talents. For our first row, it's a toss up between Demonic Appetite and Blind Fury. Both are very good passives. Foul Blade can also be considered if you need some extra mobility. Next up is Immolation Aura. This is a great just for the added fury generation, and a nice little extra damage on top of that. Trial of Ruin is next and should always be taken in every situation. This just empowers your blade dance, making it deal a little extra AoE damage. Now for the defensive talents, we have a few choices here. Neverwalk should be your default as it's good against pretty much everything. However, Soul Rending is great when up against comps with a little less burst, and more consistent damage. Say something like Shadow Play for instance, you'll be able to passively outheal their damage with the leech provided. And then Desperate Instincts allows you to survive stuns, so if you think you're in danger of being bursted 100-0 inside of a stun by something like Turbo for instance, this should be the pick. Next up we have First Blood. This is again hands down the best on this row, in all situations. With Blade Dance being a huge part of your damage, the reduced fury cost and extra single target damage is a great boost. 
On the penultimate row, we're going to be wanting to take Fallow Action. Again, this is the best talent on this row in all scenarios due to it allowing you an easier time to land your mana rifts. And for the last talent, you will of course be wanting to take Demonic. This allows you to enter Metamorphosis every time you use your Eye Beam. Moving on to PvP talents, there is two you'll always want to be running. The first being of course Mana Rift. This is the sole reason Demon Hunter is at our top 3 melee spot right now. The ability to always be able to win on mana is huge and extremely overpowered. To combine with this, we're going to want Detainment. This makes it so you're able to land your mana rifts out of your imprison. And for your third talent, you'll be wanting to take Cover of Darkness. This gives you and your team a very strong defensive that they can rely on to stay alive. However, in some situations, mainly against casters, it's better to swap out Cover for Darkness for Reverse Magic to either reduce some of the damage from dots, such as if you're up against a Shadow Priest, or even when facing other caster cleaves with a lot of crowd control for your healer. You can just simply reverse the crowd control so that you can survive. In regards to Azerite traits, Demon Hunters are aiming to get two Revolving Blades, two Thirsting Blades, then one Eyes of Rage and one Chaotic Transformation. You can get all these and still get three of your best defensive trait, which is Burning Soul. Burning Soul for a defensive trait is huge. As a Demon Hunter, you are of course wanting to purge off cooldown for the Fury. So add a heal on top of that and it's what makes Demon Hunters that extra bit unkillable. But yeah, two Revolving, two Thirsting and then one of each of the 1.1 Wonder traits, Eyes of Rage and Chaotic Transformation. As you can see here, this is the current best Azerite setup you could possibly get. For stat priority and gear, you are aiming for two stats above all others, and that's haste and versatility. Looking to avoid critical strike and mastery when possible. Your stat priority looks like this. Now we've got everything we need to get into arena, let's discuss some compositions that you should be on the lookout to play. Demon Hunter Death Knight Restoration Dread. This composition has been taking both ladder and competitive play by storm proving time and time again to be one of the strongest compositions right now. It pairs three very hard to kill classes and great consistent damage, with the fact you have mana rift, so winning on mana is always going to be a possibility. Demon Hunter Destruction Restoration Shaman This composition has seen some success on ladder, again putting mana rift to good use, with the Demon Hunter sitting on the healer for a large portion of the game, while the Destruction Warlock threatens the DPS with those Chaos Bolts. This composition likes to abuse its mobility to stay connected to targets, forcing the enemy healer to have to burn through mana, healing through the consistent damage. Combine that with mana rifts on cooldown and you're never going to be outlasting this one. Ok guys, just to quickly address a common question we're likely to get, and that's where is Assassination Rogue? Well, the truth is Assassination is still incredibly strong, however only in certain compositions like RMD or RLD. Demon Hunter as a class in general is just far superior. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and helped you somewhat in deciding what class to play, or simply inspired you to try something new. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed. And also, remember, if you want more information on the classes included in this guide, be sure to check out the rest of our more in-depth guides.